Welcome to some new r slash petty revenge stories, where people get revenge on the ones that want them. I hope you had a great day. But first, thank you for subscribing to the channel and for all those likes. Today we have three great stories, so let's get right into them, shall we? The first story is called 40k for telling it to the right person. I worked at a chainsaw long in the US for minimum wage plus tips. We got paid on a sliding scale, the more you added services, the more you hourly pay. Then for back to school, we started offering $10 haircuts. It's dumb to offer a big discount on back to school, because that's when everyone needs a haircut, but whatever. Except to advertise the sale, we had to stand on a rickety step stool and hang a 10 foot long, 3 foot wide banner off the roof of our store. The step stool alone made it a dangerous task, but on top of it, the sidewalk was uneven. Our manager insisted we do this twice a day, open and close, in case someone steals the banner because certainly someone would want to steal a banner with our logo that says $10 haircuts. It was annoying, but I was looking forward to my next paycheck. I had a high service dollar per hour, which should have meant a bigger hourly pay and paycheck. Except it didn't. That $7 per haircut discount, it was coming out of our final service dollar calculations and we ended up making significantly less than usual. I had worked there for years and this was the smallest back to school paycheck I'd ever seen. I went in the next day and was mad. That morning, a co-worker who was a total brown nose and gossip and I were outside setting up the banner. It was my turn to stand on the rickety step stool and I said I was glad this will be the last time I ever do this. I was fully prepared to make a joke about how I was going to fall and crack my head open when the petty revenge idea came into my mind and I swiftly executed it. When she asked why, I told her not to tell anyone, but I had accepted a job at another salon with a set schedule, higher commission and $5 more an hour. I said I planned on putting in my two weeks, but they needed me to start sooner, so I was going to work the weekend and not come back. After reiterating she could not tell anyone, especially not our boss, she agreed. I left early that day and on my next shift my boss pulled me into her office. She said she'd heard a rumor that I was leaving to work at a different salon. I told her I had a much better offer elsewhere, but if she could match that, I would love to stay. She had to put a call in to our district leader about the race, but said I could work with a set schedule starting the following week. I was consistently ranked number 2 in sales for our store and the district, so the district leader approved the race and I stayed there another 5 years. So I got an additional $39,000 in pay for accidentally telling the saloon gossip my secret. I also got 20% commission on $500 to $1000 a week in product sales. And there is a bonus revenge. I also started printing out my service sales slip from the day before at the beginning of every shift, so that when payroll readjusted the paychecks to include coupons, I could pull up my record and dispute it. According to payroll, there was nothing they could do about it. A few months after I left, a different employee in another state filed a class action lawsuit and I got a letter asking if I wanted to be part of it. I accepted, and the lawyer loved receiving 5 years worth of documentation, emails from corporate and payroll, etc. They had to go back through all of my paychecks and compensate me for the difference. 19 cents an hour here and 30 cents an hour there added up a lot. And despite the fact that the settlement was split with a lot of people, I got 10k from that in addition to my adjusted pay, which was around half the settlement amount. The next story is called, I had to prove a point. A few years ago, I, 22 female, had a friend, Alex, 24 female, who was always late. She was also the kind of person who would tell you I'm on my way, when she was not in fact on her way. That one trait of hers cost me quite a lot of inconvenience. One time, we both were invited to a surprise birthday party for our mutual friend. Clearly written on the invitation was something along the lines of, be sure to arrive at 6pm, do not be late or you will miss the surprise. Come the day of the party, she and I had agreed to meet at my house and drive over together. Around 5pm I asked her when she would be at my place. She told me she would be there around 5.30, which was great because the party was about 30 minutes away. At 5.30 I called her to ask where she was and she told me she had not even left yet. She then promised that she would be there in 5 minutes. I figured that was okay because she lived fairly close by. Long story short, she ended up getting to my house at 6. I was mad. We left immediately and made it to the party around 6.30. By that time the surprise had obviously taken place and the party was in full swing. I mentioned to her that I was really bothered that she had been late. Not only that, but she had swung me along and lied to me and prevented me from being on time. 
She responded by saying things like, it's not that big of a deal and we were only 30 minutes late and don't be so dramatic. At that point I was sick of her being late and her attitude. Being late, lying and downplaying someone's feelings are all rude. So I went to a nearby steakhouse and took a gift card without putting any money on it. I wrote $30 on the card and gave it to her a few days later, telling her it was a random gift for being my friend. A few days after that I got a text from her asking if I was sure I activated the card. I told her yes, I was sure and asked her why she was asking. She responded by saying she had gone to the restaurant with some friends without her purse and tried to use the gift card but it wasn't working. It was at that point that I gave myself a ray by responding with Oops, I guess I was wrong and it's not that big of a deal and you're only $30 short. She immediately picked up on what I was doing and I proceeded to receive a few very angry texts about how embarrassed she was and how rude and disrespectful I was for doing that. All of this just because I was a few minutes late? Blah blah blah. I simply responded with So you are saying if I tell you one thing then do another and it directly impacts your life in a negative way that is disrespectful? And if you get mad at me for it and I downplay your feelings, that is rude? Am I understanding you correctly? She didn't respond. I found out later that none of her friends were willing or able to cover her dinner, so she had to stay about 30 minutes for her parents to rescue her. We didn't talk much after that. Hopefully she learned a valuable lesson. I sure had a great time teaching it. The last story is called You are sick? Mid 2020 my boss disappeared. Just as we were gearing up for our most challenging, time-intensive project in the last 5 years, he dropped off the face of the earth. We kept working for a week or so without him, because everything was virtual and the virtual work world was still so new we didn't really need him. We were delegating tasks ourselves and completing things on our own. We spoke to co-workers maybe twice a week. But some decisions were beyond our discretion, so we could not move forward on those aspects of the project until we received a response from him. After about 7 to 10 total days of silence, we called his boss's boss, who informed our team that our boss had the virus, so wasn't able to work right now. We took that at face value, of course sent him letters of well wishes and didn't bother him with work stuff or asked why he was able to notify his boss but not us. 3 weeks go by, still not a word. We are beginning to discuss amongst ourselves whether or not the worst happened. We are terrified and horrified and so concerned. We are contemplating calling his extended family. We are sending flowers and care packages to his apartment. Meanwhile the project has descended into chaos because no leader was appointed in our boss's stead. So we are forced to navigate several layers of bureaucracy in order to accomplish most anything at all. Whereas in the past he would have just signed off in real time. Around week 4 or 5 one of our co-workers suggests he doesn't really have the virus but is instead using it as an excuse to take time off. We all jump all over our coworker, asking how he could insinuate something like that and lamenting about what a tragedy our boss is probably living through. People were chilly to him for days after that. Week 7. We are undertaking a letter writing campaign to upper management, demanding an acting boss be appointed while ours is recovering. The project is a month behind schedule. We are all working overtime every day, sometimes on weekends, without extra compensation, just to keep up with the mess of the boss's sudden absence. Week 8, he finally reappears, logging into our morning meeting as though nothing happened. He looks well rested, well fed and has a tan. Not at all like someone who's just come out the other side of a 6 week respiratory virus. He says something quickly to the effect of, yeah that was brutal. Glad to be better and glad to be back, let's get to work. But he doesn't want to talk about what happened or answer any of our questions like, were you in the hospital, what was it like etc. Fast forward to about 4 or 5 months after this. My sister sends me a promo for a fairly new reality show. I never heard of it but it's on a major platform. She says, isn't this guy a friend of yours or something? I swear I've seen him and you together. I watched the trailer for the show and lo and behold that's my boss, participating as a contestant on a reality show. It did not take long for me to put the pieces together and realize he took extended leave to go on TV that he knew he wouldn't otherwise get during this massive project. And he lied about it under the guise of a vicious disease that nearly all of us had lost a loved one to. I sit and stew with this information, unsure of how to handle it. I know confronting him won't get me very far, but I can't just do nothing, right? I'm not close enough with any of my colleagues to discuss this with them and trust that they wouldn't run off and send an all company email about it. So I slept on it a few nights and then the opportunity fell right in my lap. 
I got an email from corporate, encouraging teams still working remotely to plan virtual social functions to keep our collegial culture growing and to stay in touch. Among the suggestions were game night, trivia and watch party. With the premiere of the show only a couple of weeks away, I got busy telling everyone how I'd been meaning to get into this show and that it's so enticing and exciting, basically laying the groundwork to guilt them into coming to an impromptu virtual watch party of ours. I offered to get special shirts made up and sent them to each person's house, whatever I had to do to get the attention of corporate. Finally, I sent an evite to all my boss's bosses and any other members of corporate I could justify inviting without making a total laughing stock out of myself. Because this is entirely virtual, my boss is unable to overhear any of the chatter. He doesn't realize I'm hyping up the show and he doesn't realize I've planned a watch party for it. I wasn't inviting him unless he had the balls to explicitly ask about it. I was hoping he wouldn't have heard about it at all. Not until afterward. That was really the only way this could work. The night comes and I am screen sharing the show to our whopping 64 people, a huge chunk of my department. Many members of corporate had shown up because I was the only person stupid enough to buy into their virtual social work party scheme, so they felt pressured to support it. I was holding my breath, hoping this would go my way, bracing myself for some kind of curveball. But there wasn't even that dramatic of a build up. Right at the outset they introduced the premise, which included the contestants being in a safe bubble in an exotic location and gave a brief overview of each contestant. As my boss was introduced right down to what he did for work and I could see people register delight and surprise, then go blank, just before sliding into confusion and rage. The chat took a drastic turn from oh my godness and I knew him ran. And then there was the important message, wait, when was this filmed? My audience dropped from 64 to 58 to mid 30s. And by the time the episode was over it was just me and the other 15 core members of the team. One asked if I'd already known, but some members of the team are very close to the boss, so all I said was, well, I definitely do now. I wrapped up the call pretty quickly after that. Perhaps one of the best bonuses is that you could already tell from episode 1 that the character arc to show a sign to our boss was bumbling idiot. He had his true colors on in full display and some production messaging up them to the 11th degree. The boss was fired. My good buddy was promoted to his place. I am an office legend now, especially since no one is 100% sure whether or not it was intentional. And it was all so satisfying that it was almost worth the dozens of hours of uncompensated overtime that led to it. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.